got the recipe. Never gonna let any outfit the best of me. Thought it was this is, but haters is messing me. Talk to the spirit, you know I've been heavenly. Company definitely show your trajectory. This ain't it, this cause I say it respectfully. It's time to eat up, red like a speeder. Taking it deeper, and that's how it better be. I never let the comparison get to me. I just remember the promises made for me. I know the enemy and that he sent for me. I keep the blood of the limits, my centerpiece. I cannot trust in no crystals or energy. Look at the chemistry, it do not even mix chemically. Most of the tricks they be gimmicks, they mimic the truth. It's poison and we got the remedy. Uh, there is a bomb, apply it. The fire can stand to the dollars. The giants, the tyrant, and all the suppliers are scheming and lying. They selling the streams and we buying it. Uh, show me the chicken, I'm frying it. Uh, show me the dough and I'm frying it. Uh, ain't never lacking it, so what I'm packing, he taking it, he magnifying it. They say you ain't about it. Tell them that you finna make it, but they doubt it. But you hold like a flower. Tell me what it's like to live with superpowers. I don't know, but I'm a kid. One of my favorite things about ARs is how customizable they are. Build kits in particular allow you to take all of your favorite parts from any company and throw them into a build, which is exactly what we did here on the US Arms Co. Moth Build. First off, you can find this full build links and discount codes all on the kit page of my website, gunmanusa.com. Becoming a member of the kit page is the best way to support the channel, so please consider doing so. Then second, yet most important, thank you to US Arms Co. for making this build happen. It was full fully sponsored by them, ammo was also provided by them, and the best part about doing sponsored builds with them is I can give you guys 15% off if you use Gunman15. Because this was a fully sponsored build, I wanted to do a full disclosure, how do I know US Arms Co. and what is our relationship? They have been the main sponsor of the channel for the last year or so. I can tell you from personal experience meeting most of the team at SHOT last year that this group of guys are extremely humble, genuine, and their values heavily align with mine, which is why I I love them so much. I do genuinely think that they make an excellent product. The rifles are solid. And to make sure that this video stays completely unbiased, I'm going to touch on the things that I don't like as well as some of the issues that I faced, not with US Arms Co. in particular, but with the build in general. I do also want to preface that because I used parts from all different companies, you never really know if the build is going to function properly, which is why you need to train with it and shoot a lot of rounds through it to make sure that everything runs properly. So that's exactly what I did. And and I will tell you what things went wrong and probably why they went wrong and how I can fix them to make sure that this is a fully reliable build for the future. So US Arms Co. came to me and said, here's a builder's kit from our website. Let's put together an absolute beast of a battle build. So I basically put together a list of all of my favorite parts at the time and came up with this. Now I do want to say that we put this together a couple months ago. My opinions have changed on some things, which I will talk about, but overall I would say this thing is absolutely solid. Starting out, just like I said, the upper, the lower, and the handguard are all from US Arms Co. I am a huge fan of their handguards. The design looks great, and the built-in QDs are well-placed. The upper and the lower are both machined from 7075 T6 aluminum. I have zero complaints about the upper, but the lower, I personally do have a couple things which are mostly just personal preference. I was able to voice all of these concerns to US Arms Co., and I'm happy to say that they are the type of company that takes every suggestion very seriously, and even went as far to say that they are open to custom orders on some of the things I'll talk about. So if you personally have any questions at all about their stuff, their team will hook you up. So first things first, I personally just prefer a flat magwell over a V-cut, even if it saves weight, especially for reloads. This isn't a huge deal because when it comes down to it, you can just train to be better with reloads. but if you want one without the V-cut, you can reach out to them and purchase their standard version lower. The only con to doing that is you also lose their cam lock technology, which I'll talk about in a little bit. The second thing is there's a lip by the mag release button, which does annoy me a little. Normally there's a gap between the lip and the button, which makes it so your finger can access the button even if it's not spot on. I do understand why they designed it this way. It can be a pro, but it's just not what I'm used to. So it may not bother you at all, but if it does, you can mitigate it by raising 
using the mag button as high as possible or switching the mag release to something like a mission first tactical, which can fix the problem completely. I have a rail scales button on this build, which I run a lot on all my other builds. Always a fan as it's naturally raised a tad on the one side, making it catch your finger a little bit better. And last with the cam lock version of the lower, you can't use grips with a beaver tail, otherwise you won't be able to remove the lower from the upper. So you're stuck with tailless grips, which isn't a big deal, but it does limit your options. The major pro to this is you gain all of the benefits of the patented cam lock system, which seals the tolerances from the upper and the lower, making your weapon system more accurate by reducing the movement of the upper and the lower under recoil. The way it's been described to me is when you glass bed a bolt gun, you remove all of the movement between the stock and the barreled receiver. This is pivotal for accuracy on that weapon platform. The cam lock is mechanically the same thing as glass bedding a bolt gun only for the AR platform. The main goal and purpose of the cam lock system was to increase accuracy. One of the things that you're going to notice when you use the cam lock system is you run into much less flyers, which if you don't know what a flyer is, it's when you shoot a super tight group except for one or two and you're wondering why that round or rounds hit so far off of where you were aiming, especially when you were super consistent each shot. During US Arms Co testing using the lower with the cam lock on even a lower quality upper, they were able to record a significant reduction in those rounds leaving center. Other companies have tried creating something similar to their system. I've personally used some of these products, one of them being the Accu Wedge, which is designed to make the fitment feel tighter by filling the void between the upper and the lower, basically pushing the upper and lower away from each other. But the difference is the cam lock system literally locks the upper and the lower together by pulling it together instead of pushing it apart. And essentially what it does is it mates the upper and the lower together. If you want to use the cam lock system, then you have to use it on their lower. But the good thing is, is you can use it with any mil spec upper on the market. After all my testing with this build, I would say building on top of their builder's kit has been nothing but reliable and smooth for me. They really did make a good product. Going through the rest of the build on the top here, we have Silencer Codes Velos, which is a dedicated 5.56 can. So far, I am a huge, huge fan of it. It's not too heavy, but definitely heavier than I thought it would be for a 3D printed can. And besides it being extremely strong, it mitigates sound and flash really well. The back pressure is really subtle due to the flow through design, which is a huge win not having gas blasted back into your eyes. Overall, I would say very, very solid can. I do want to bring up one issue that I had though. Somehow after I shot the intro, I did notice that I had a baffle strike, which I honestly have no idea what happened. I think there is a chance it was the ammo I was using, which was just Freedom Munitions 556, but I really would hate to throw shade if that wasn't the actual issue. I definitely made sure everything was tightened down right, and there's only a few factors that it could have been, but as of right now, I really don't know what happened. So I did send it back to Silencer Co., only to get it back in less than a week with fresh baffles and a new end cap free of charge. Their customer service is honestly fantastic, and that's a huge reason I personally support them besides them actually making a great product. I'm a firm believer in buying suppressors from companies who back their product. At some point, inevitably, you're going to run into a baffle strike or something's going to go wrong with your can and you want to be able to send it back in and have them fix it for you. I do want to say I personally wasn't a fan of first of Silencer Co's mounting system because I personally don't prefer having the suppressor and the mounting solution being detachable. So what I do to mitigate that is I add red Loctite so I don't have to worry about them coming apart on me. I do make sure to only use a small amount because you do sometimes have to detach them, but it's reassuring to me even though it's unlikely for them to come apart anyway, I just like to know that everything's going to stay exactly the way it should under fire. To mount the Velos, we have Silencer Co's three prong, which I've said before I'm a big fan of. The taper keeps the carbon forward of the thread so everything stays nice and clean. The barrel I chose is a 16 inch mid-length cold hammer forged 1.7 twist from BCM with a 0.75 gas journal. Amazing barrel, very accurate, very strong. BCM makes a fantastic barrel in my opinion, but you're definitely going to pay for it. The gas tube is BCM and the gas block is from Superlative Arms and it's the adjustable melanite version. I've used these gas blocks for a while and in general it's been great gas block, but I did run into an issue with this particular one, which happened because I ran it really dirty, really dry, and I just didn't clean it for a while. Basically it just carboned up and the gun would only cycle suppressed, but barely. Once it got cleaned though, it was right back on track. And honestly, I have to hand it to him for how dirty it was. I'm surprised that it was even shooting at all. Now I know in my AK video, I said that the Cloud Rain 3 is my new go-to light. But like I said before, the light 
site was one of those things that I built out before I found the cloud lights. Despite my newfound knowledge, I still love this setup. The body and the head is the ModLite PLH version 2 light package sitting super far forward on a T-Rex arms light bar, which is a must have in my opinion, a UE tail cap, and a mod light button on the HRF hunchback. Overall, I would say this is a solid setup, but again, I like the cloud more minus cloud button. The handguard has a bunch of accessories on it, including quite a few of the things that I run on a lot of my other builds. We have my favorite offset irons from Magpul, rail scales on both sides for heat mitigation, and a rail wrap also for heat mitigation. The rail scales anchor and the rail scales QTR. I have always loved this foregrip. I think it looks aesthetically the best and it also functions really well for me and the QTR in the front here. Just make sure that my finger doesn't slip forward. Holding the EOTech EXPS 3-4 is the Unity Fast Riser and holding the G45 magnifier is also Unity's flip to center riser. The bolt carrier group is my usual favorite, Sharps XPB, which I personally think is among the best. I have a ton of these BCGs and have run them all super hard only to find them very reliable. And the charging handle is the Jackal from X2, which I run on all of my builds as well. On the lower here, I chose the Radiant Talon for the safety, which is one of my favorite selectors. I did throw on a bad lever, but I personally think I might remove it because I never use it due to the muscle memory of how I train. I do have CMC anti-walk pins, which aren't really necessary because of the trigger, which is Trigger Tech's Diamond Single Stage, which I've been a huge fan of. Other than I do wish their reset was a little bit more aggressive, but that's actually why they came out with a new Duty version, which does have a more aggressive reset. So if you want to save a little bit of money, you can go with this one and still run a fantastic smooth trigger. Before I was running a driven arms grip, but the angle was a little too aggressive for me. Plus I wanted to have the grip with the storage. So I switched it for the B522 with the battery plug. And last we have the Wilson combat trigger guard, but you can choose whatever you like the shape of. Ford controls or even Magpul makes one of my favorites, but I have loved this one so far. On the end here, we have a Gen 3 LaTac folder, which has been great and reliable for me, a BCM castle nut and end plate attached to the Geissele buffer tube, and I'm also running Geissele's H1 buffer with the Super 42 spring, which has always been very reliable for me while also cutting out the annoying twang sound that you get while shooting any other spring. The stock is a Magpul SLS, which I've run and loved on other builds for a while. And last, we do have a Blue Force gear sling, which in my opinion is one of the most comfortable and high quality slings I've used. As I've been able to train with this build, it's only made me happier and happier. Having a weapon system that is close quarters capable as well as distance capable is super important. And the more I train in both situations, the more I love weapon systems that are designed to multitask. This AR in general is definitely a higher budget rifle build, but you're definitely going to get what you pay for in many ways with this. I am currently working on a build right now where I completed it with a $1,500 total budget. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. I'm actually shooting that one here pretty soon. One of the most important points I get to share on this channel is yes, the builds I do are super fun, but they are absolutely useless if you don't know how to use them effectively, which is why you need to build it and hit the range. Make sure you're training often with what you have so you can be as effective as possible in our mission of preserving innocent life. Protect life, don't trust the federal government, and I'll see you in the next one.